everyone. This short course, I will introduce empathy mapping, a very swift method to gain empathy into the uses of your products and services and to get new novel insights. I'm Guido Stomf, I'm a professor at the Holland University of Applied Sciences. To start with, what is an empathy map? And in order to answer that question, it's good to know that it actually is developed uh, as part of the business model canvassing. That's a quite famous book actually, which is used for uh, starting up new businesses or making existing businesses better. And in which they uh, developed a couple of techniques that together result into the development of new businesses. And one of those techniques was an empathy map. And it is geared to understand um, what we know about users or consumers of a product or a service. Like all the techniques of business canvas modeling, it's basically a big poster which you have to fill in. You conduct an interview first with the user or a consumer, and afterwards you fill in the poster as a way to analyze what you just heard. And this poster depicts a couple of areas to categorize what you discovered that the user or consumer is seeing, what kind of things they're hearing, what they, what they say, what they do, and what they think and feel. And the entire thing is geared towards understanding what the pains are someone has with existing products or services, or what potential gains they have, what potential needs they have. Now, to explain it a little bit better, let me fill in and take you through it step by step. In the middle, you see this hat, which depicts iconically what people see, yeah, that's the eye, what they hear, which is the ear, and what they say, which is the mouth, and also do, which is more than just the mouth, but it's in the same area. And on the top side of it, what do they think and feel? So when you did an interview, you gonna fill it in afterwards. First thing is you put in the metadata. Who did I interview, on what date, who was doing the interview and things like that. And then on the base of your interview, you try to categorize what you heard and saw on the base of this interview into these uh, 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 areas, the segments on the poster. What does he see? How does he see that? Who was showing it to him? What does he hear? From whom did he hear that? What does he say actually about it? And what kind of behavior does he do? And on the base of those things, we can get a feeling about what he thinks and feels about it. If you filled all these segments in, possibly you can instill what are his pains and gains. The pains are what are his fears, what are his frustrations, and the gains are what are his needs, motivations, and goals. I'm going to give an example. I just interviewed someone who was Michael, who I interviewed in 2018, and I met him in a hospital. And he had a scan, and he was a little bit confused, to put it mildly, and a little bit angry as well. And I wanted to understand what happened, and I used the empathy map for it. So the thing is, what happened is that when he was having his scan, he saw that the operator was continuously checking the screen. And also, actually, it's not here in, uh, in, on, the, on the slide, but also just afterwards, the operator was making notes, checking the screen over and over again. So he asked, uh, what, what do you see? What is it that you see? Um, apparently, from the way how he said it, how he explained it to me, he was he was quite aggressively. He really wanted to know what the operator was, writing, operator was writing and what did he say. And what he heard, what the operator was saying to him, he said, you know, I can't say much. Others have to do that. I'm not a specialist. I am not your doctor. Probably, and we'll never know for sure because we can't take a look into Michael's head, but probably what he was thinking is there must be something visible. There must be something to be seen on the scan and that is bad. Maybe. I have cancer, maybe I'm about to die. So those were his pains he, that, that manifested in the interview. 
And again, and this is why this empathy map is working out quite well, why it works so well, is that you get an idea what he needs, what a patient like Michael needs. Maybe it's good to give him quick feedback or even just feedback on we didn't see anything bad or we only saw small things. But that is what Michael was after. And maybe that's not possible. But then we have to find other ways. But his gain would be to get quick feedback on the results rather than have to wait a couple of days until he sees his doctor. This example was actually just one thing you can put into the empathy map. And what you do is that you go through this empathy map of what they see, what they hear, what they tell, what they do, what you probably think and feel again and again and again. You do a couple of iterations, preferably with other people, so that in time you will get a good understanding of what the pains and gains are. In the explanation I just said, it was one empathy map on the base of one interview. I made an empathy map of Michael. What I see in practice is that many people produce empathy maps for a couple of people, an aggregated group of people, or they even invent an empathy map for a group of people. Now this poses the question, can an empathy map be for just an individual, someone you interviewed, to get insights from that individual interview, or can it be used for a group of people. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind is that experiences with products or services, or like Michael in the hospital, are always personal and quite different for different persons. So in a way to have an aggregated empathy map is difficult. However, if you first interview five, six persons and make an empathy map of each of them, it's well possible to try to find what the cumulative uh, empathy map could be, what the aggregated experience could be. That brings me to the last part of this small course, and that is to reflect on the method itself. What I learned in years that I used it is that it is the fast lane to get empathy with someone. If you do an interview and you use an empathy map and you really categorize what they see here, you get a deeper understanding of that person and it produces empathy within you. So it's really the fast lane for getting empathy. And I really like it as a tool for documenting interviews and the insights gained from those interviews. So it can be an excellent tool. However, what I learned is that some people try to fill in empathy maps without doing a real interview, without having other experts that take a look at it together with them, how to categorize and how to interpret what the interview is. Now, to be honest, that's totally useless. Then you're just uh, affirming your own ideas and things like that. So don't do that unless you had a real interview before it. And often what happens is, well, you have to get a little bit the hang of it doing an empathy map because very often it results in two cliches. There's a lot of interpretation you need to do because from what they say and hear and do, you have to interpret what they think and then what are, what are the pains and gains. And it can be a little bit cliche-like what the results are if you not genuinely empathize and try to understand what people are doing. However, try to use it because it's really a very fast tool for getting empathy. Thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you in other courses.